So professional. Yeah. You know, next thing you know, you're on the clapperboard. Do you know there's an app for that on the there, is there yeah, really? yeah, I do need a clapperboard. So, uh, hey guys, welcome back. And uh, we're back again with Dave. And uh, hope you enjoyed the last video. In this video, uh, Dave's going to be installing his cam chain and setting the tension. Yeah, so uh, as, as, although it might look like I've done uh, many Norton engines, this is the first time I've done a complete Norton engine rebuild. And I don't always do things the right way. So we're gonna see how to do it the wrong way and then how to do it the right way. And thanks again to Mike for the proper tools to do it the proper way. So I'm beginning the timing side reassembly. Started off here with the crankshaft uh, ceiling washer, lip side out on that. Followed up by this uh, tri-sided washer. And again, the reason for that washer having those cutaways is to fit the um, gear puller for the pinion. We used that when we took that apart. Um, but uh, that's to grab so you get the teeth behind the actual gear. Uh, I've been getting the woodruff key in next. And then I will go ahead and get this pinion on itself. One of the tricks is to have in a good selection of thick walled sockets. They make good drivers for this. We should hopefully be able to drive that gear right on in, right up against the washer and on that key. Next thing to go on is the timing chain. So go ahead and get your crankshaft at top dead center so that this mark is straight up and down. And next we fit the camshaft to the camshaft sprocket and intermediate gear. And you can see the marks here in red that should correspond and go right to the marks on that pinion there. The other key thing is to make sure once you're done that you've got 10 rollers between this mark here on this gear, and then count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then you can see the second mark. So that makes sure that you have the right distance on the chain. Again, if you can see those red marks on the intermediate pinion, again, we'll make sure that those line up to the point on the crankshaft. They do, and then to rotate again the camshaft so that it fits on. And again, we'll double check the number of rollers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And there's our second mark. So now we know that that timing is on. The next step is going to be the cam chain uh, tensioner. There are two flapped uh, washer pieces and the tensioner. There are two thicknesses. I'm not sure you'll be able to see that, but there's definitely one that's thinner than the other. The thinner one goes to the back and just make sure it lines up to the shape of the boss on the timing case. And then you can slip the tensioner then under the chain as such, and again, to put on the thicker plate on the outside. From there, there's two tooth washers. I won't try to say that too quickly. Two tooth washers and two nuts. And then you want to just back those nuts off to where you can just slightly move the tensioner. And it's only a 3 16 of an inch, I believe, play, which is not a lot. And again, you're supposed to check it at the tightest spot. 
as we rotate around the crankshaft. There will be a tight spot in the chain. You want to make sure you take your measurement at the tightest spot. Again, 3 sixteenths is not a lot. Luckily, the workshop manual also mentions that it's 4.8 millimeters, which is a lot easier to find on this digital scale than trying to figure out 3 sixteenths, which is still correct. So we'll just try to figure out how much play we actually have here at this point. Now, as we saw in the previous segment, I did set the timing chain tension with the intermediate shaft not supported. And I was always, and I came back around again and said, uh, since I do have the actual tool to do it, I probably should do it the right way. And we'll have to see if it makes, how much difference it actually makes. Now you can see here, I thought that this intermediate shaft was actually pretty well secure, but if you can see just by me moving it with my hand, the upper run of the chain actually flexes quite a bit. So you can definitely tell there is some variance in there. That's just from moving the intermediate shaft. So in order to do this correct, we'll put the plate back on and readjust tension on the chain. Now with this uh, supporting plate in place, we'll double check the cam chain play. I can tell that there is a little bit more play than when I first did this adjustment, so I can tell that we do need to make some adjustments here. I definitely like that one, at least at that point in the chain. And of course, what we want to do is to confirm it in several places. We've definitely got a tight spot right there. And there we go. Uh, checked in a couple different spots. Now the last thing to do is tighten up the, the tensioner uh, nuts again, I believe 15 foot pounds.